In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever into the age of all ages. Amen. As we read in the Synexarium, today is the Feast of the Glorious Annunciation, um, and we read from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter, very good, chapter 1. Okay, and we... We read this gospel quite often, especially this year, because we read it um, when else during the year in church? Hmm? The, the second Sunday of the Blessed Month of, of Kiak, in preparation for the birth of Christ. Also, every 29th of the Blessed Month, well, almost everyone, um, nine, the nine months that um, the the uh, Lord Jesus Christ was in the womb of the Holy Virgin Mary and throughout the year. So basically f starting um, from uh, basically today until the Nativity, the Feast of the Nativity, um, those nine months we read on the 29th. <clears throat> but today is actually the Feast of, of the Annunciation, which is why we uh, pause um, from, from the Great Lent readings, not the fast, but we'll pause from the readings uh, to focus on um, <clears throat> the, the great feast of the Lord. Um, and as we said, it's the first of, of, of the seven major feasts, right? <clears throat> and um, it, as we also said, it takes precedence over the fourth Sunday of the Great Lent. In the readings and the rites and the hymns, usually the church um, has this one combined package for every celebration. And so there's many hints in the service to remind us that something different is happening uh, today. <clears throat> uh, and so typically we read on the fourth Sunday of the Great Lent, we read the, the Lord with the Samaritan woman in the Gospel according to St. John chapter 4. And we'll try to tie in both events as well as incorporate um, a, third, uh, a third passage um, from the Song of Songs in chapter 5 um, to see how um, as the Lord dealt with the Samaritan women, as the Lord dealt with, uh, or as uh, the Beloved dealt with the Shunammite woman, that God deals with us. And so he came and visited us um, <clears throat> by taking flesh from the Holy Virgin, uh, St. Mary. And so um, why are the Lord's feasts more important than the readings of Great Lent? Like why did why did we substitute? Um, because the the gospel of the Lord with the Samaritan woman is important for the Great Lent, right? And the Great Lent readings are important. They, every one of the fifty five days is de designated by the Church from the beginning, right? But on days like this, we pause, even on a Sunday. So why? Why is the Annunciation more important? As we read in the Synexarium, the theme of the feasts is what? Salvation. That's the most important thing in our life. That's the most important thing in our teaching. That's, that's the most important thing we should focus on in our spiritual life. Right? So the beginning of salvation. So the seven major feasts of the Lord are, are we say of the Lord because that's how the Lord gave us or offered to us the salvation. <clears throat> right? So... Um, the Lord came to seek and to save that which is lost, as he uh, said in the Gospel uh, uh, according to St. Luke chapter 19, um, when he visited Zacchaeus. <clears throat> and also this is in reference to Ezekiel. I will seek that was lost and bring back what was driven away, bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick. So this is the, the heart of God, to do this for his beloved, <clears throat> who is each and every one of us. And you might not have noticed it, but in the beginning, all the readings pertain to the same theme, right? So all of these readings are for the Feast of the Annunciation, not for the Samaritan Woman Sunday, right? So like for just a, a small example, like in the book of Acts, it starts out with, with um, St. Stephen's um, uh, testimony or witness or sermon that he gives before his, right before his martyrdom. And he goes throughout the history of the Israelites in the Old Testament and how they responded to God and how God, God dealt with them. So here he's talking about actually Moses, but it's in reference to Christ. And that's why the church started with this. One of the reasons why we, we choose this uh, reading it says, now when he was 40 years old, it came to his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel, right? <clears throat> this is in reference to the Old Testament, but actually it's pointing to Christ, right? Because the number 40 
signifies perfection or completion, right? So in the fulfillment of days, Christ, it came to the heart of God to visit his brethren who are all of each and every one of us by taking flesh in, in, uh, uh, and taking our form, okay? Um, <clears throat> so uh, this, this is just one, one slight example, but the, the readings of today are full of these references to um, the journey of, of salvation. <clears throat> so because salvation is a journey of the soul um, from wherever it may be to the heart of God, to paradise, to heaven, to the bosom of the Father. <clears throat> and there's only one gate that we can enter through in order to attain the kingdom of heaven. And that is Christ. That is his cross. That is his church, a baptism, communion. Um, so that's the path of salvation. The road, the, the longest, the road is long and narrow, but the end is glorious and beautiful. Um, <clears throat> and so when we focus on our salvation and we see all the things that the Lord has provided for us and everything that he has done for us and that everything that he's willing to do for us, it makes the journey uh, beautiful and glorious and joyful. <clears throat> um, and so back up a little bit, though. Um, and in reference to the book of Song of Songs, if, if we read this book and actually in the, in the history, the church kind of cautioned the people from reading this book in the wrong way. Because we don't, there's some, many things in the Bible we take literally and many things we take fi figuratively and some things we can take both, right? This book is purely figurative, right? Um, <clears throat> that's the way at least we take it because it pertains to our salvation, not a historical uh, story. <clears throat> Even though there are some aspects of the, the story that are historically true. <clears throat> so, for example, in, in, in chapter 5, we just go for a few verses in chapter 5. Um, <clears throat> um, if, if you're not aware, just to set the story, there is a, a, a woman who is um, has her beloved, and he is the king. And she d longs for him, and he longs for her. So it's it's a love story, um, but it's pertaining to us. Each one of every uh, each one of every each each and every one of us, excuse me, and the Lord Jesus Christ, the the true bridegroom, <clears throat> right? So there's a lot of symbolism here. For example, she says, "I sleep, but my heart is awake." Well, what does that mean, <laughs> right? Um, we are asleep, and we'll get to that in a second. And and then she hears the voice of her beloved the Lord Jesus Christ, he knocks saying, open for me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. Of course, sister here is figurative, right? Um, for my head is covered with dew and my locks with the drops of the night. We'll go through some of these passages or, or these uh, phrases one by one. <clears throat> so again, it has to do with the relationship between God and us. Um, and the, the fact that the bride is asleep here, this is the, the reminder of what happened in the history of, of the, the, the Israelites, but also to each one of to each and every one of us in our relationship with God, right? <clears throat> because we begin, we have salvation offered to us. We have our beloved, um, our first love, but oftentimes we neglect our salvation. Um, just like the Samaritan woman, she had her calling. She had her purpose, but she was lost in the beginning of her life, right? <clears throat> And she was living in darkness. And we, when we're far from God, we feel and sense and see this darkness <clears throat> because we don't see the light of Christ. <clears throat> and so, um, but God wants us to be a child of the light, um, even though we are determined to spend our life in the night. Um, even if we say, my heart is awake, we are in a slumber. <clears throat> And so um, what does uh, the, the scripture say about this or the, the fathers remind us of? They say that God is constantly reminding us, wake up, wake up. And the church is kind, constantly telling us, especially during these times of Lent, to wake up, to repent, to change, to come to him. <clears throat> and so here are some, just some examples in, in the history. Like first, <clears throat> according to St. Paul in the book of the Romans, he says, even before the law, there was a natural law. There was nature that God gave, uh, as St. Paul says in Romans chapter 1, he says, although they knew God, the people, 
They knew God. They did not glorify him as God, nor they were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. So <clears throat> God gave the human race the natural law to awaken their hearts so they would have no excuse uh, for salvation, to focus on God, right? That didn't work. So he said, fine, I, I will write these this law um, on tablets of stone, um, <clears throat> right? He gave the written law, starting with Moses, and then, as we know, the f first five books of the Old Testament. Um, <clears throat> but even that, he gave them the written law, but what, then they sinned against the law. They fell under its condemnation, as St. Paul says in the Romans 2. For um, we, we, don't, we don't just need to be hearers of the law, but <clears throat> doers of the law. Um, and that's how we get the justification. That's how we get the salvation. Um, and unfortunately, even the, the written scripture is not um, working enough in, in us um, although it has all the power because it's written by the Holy Spirit, we fall short oftentimes and still lack um, the, the, the proper lifestyle, right? <clears throat> like the Samaritan woman, for example. She, with the other Samaritans, they believed in the first five books of the law, at least. But the Messiah was in front of, of them and of her, and she didn't recognize him at first. <clears throat> Uh, and then after that, the Lord said, fine, I will send my prophets, right? <clears throat> um, but what did, the, what did the people of God do to the prophets, right? The Lord wept over what happened um, to, to them. He said, the, the Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. And even they did the same to him. <clears throat> How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Right? So this reminds us of each and every one of us, oftentimes in our spiritual life, we reject God. We reject the, the, all of the different hints that he gives us to come to him, whether in the nature or in the scripture or in um, the messages that he sends to us, whether by written word or <clears throat> anyway. He has many different ways that he uses to speak to every one of us. And oftentimes we reject it and we ignore it and we um, think we know better. Um, and the Samaritan woman, she was living in sin she, from one husband to another, rejected by her family, rejected by her friends, rejected by her neighbors. Um, but the Lord said, no, I still have to go to her. I still love her. I still find her worthy. Um, <clears throat> and despite all of what mankind had done, for, for thousands of years, God said, no, I'm still, I sent the prophets, I sent the law, I, I, I have to do something, right? <clears throat> um, and so what does the beloved speak to his, um, his, his bride who is lazy, sleeping on her bed at night? Um, he knocks and says, open for me. Um, you're my sister because I, I'm one with you and I took your nature. Right, um, you you are you are my love because my heart is is filled with desire to be one with you. You are my dove because I see the Holy Spirit inside of you that I have placed inside of you, and you're my perfect one because I see your potential. But what does she do? <laughs> um, we'll see. And, and she say, "No, I'm uh, sorry. I washed my feet, and I'm in bed. I can't get up." Um, and he knew she was going to say this. And he still calls her his beloved, his, his perfect one, right? Um, as the Lord says in the book of Revelation, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and dine with him and he with me, <clears throat> right? The Lord came to the Samaritan woman in the flesh and he had to go through Samaria. There were other ways um, to, to go from uh, where, where he was going um, to... Uh, like to, from Jerusalem to Galilee, he, there, were, there were other paths, but he had to go to Samaria because he had to sit with this woman. Um, and that's how the Lord thinks of each and every one of us. I have to go to you. I have to give you my message of love. <clears throat> um, I have to ask you for water. Even though I am the fountain of living waters, I, I need to ask something for, I need to start a conversation to convince you how much I love you. <clears throat> 
and I don't want to go home, back home without you. I want to convince you how great my home is and how better it is than, than the filth that you're living in, that the darkness that you're living in. <clears throat> and so um, he was able to convince her uh, that he knows all, right? When he had the conversation with her and, and says, you're right in saying that you've ha had five husbands and the one whom you now have is not your husband and that you spoke truly. And then she began to think, oh, this is, this is someone different. This was someone not just a normal person. Um, I perceive that you are a prophet, <clears throat> actually more than a prophet. Um, and, and so <clears throat> the voice of my beloved is calling me to, to this change, to by recognizing, by helping me recognize his love for me. Um, <clears throat> and so after a while, we become lukewarm in our loving for him. We are overcome by sleep and we can't stay awake in the night of his suffering, right? Because then he says, my head is covered with dew and my locks with the drops of the night. That's in reference to the, to the cross. Um, <clears throat> but the Lord is gently rebuking us by saying, you are my love. You are my perfect one. Um, no, I'm not. So the response is supposed to be, no, I'm not. I need you to make me like this. I am my dove because your Holy Spirit is in me, but I'm not listening to the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and so the Lord says, fine, open, open for me um, uh, because I, I'm coming to seek and to save that which was lost, right? <clears throat> um, and so as we take one step to him, he takes a thousand miles. It's, it's not uh, one for one. Uh, by any means. And when we realize how much he has done, then we say, okay, fine, I, I can at least go an inch, even though he's, he's come a thousand miles. <clears throat> but the thing is, as St. Athanasius says, the Lord comes to everyone, but he doesn't force anyone to open. Um, as we, we said before, like in this icon, for example, we don't put a doorknob on the door, um, even though he is the door, but he wants to say, I, I need a response from you. I don't want to force myself upon you. I want you to welcome me into your heart. Maybe you did before, but then you shut the door again. So open the door again. <clears throat> and so this is this is the daily response that we have to have for God. Not saying, oh, I opened on Sunday, but I'm going to close the rest of the days. I'll see you next week. That, that's not how the Christian responds to, to the voice of God. <clears throat> um, and so... Um, uh, as we said, the Lord said, my head is covered with you. I am suffering for you, the crown of thorns, right? Um, my, like on the night of, uh, uh, before his crucifixion, his sweat turned like blood, right? Um, and this is, also reminds us of the myrrh, which you'll see later on in the chapter if, if you read it. Um, uh, and, and so um, our life is oftentimes filled with darkness and sleep, but through the recognition of God's love for us, which penetrates the darkness. And even though we are in the darkness and asleep, he still comes to us. Um, we just need to open, open every day. Uh, take a time to open that door of your heart and speak to your beloved. And you'll find um, a joy and a peace and that surpasses all understanding that is able to carry you out throughout the day. And you'll start to desire that time with him more and more and more. Um, and so, um, again, this is her response. I've taken off my robe. How can I put it on? He is the one who closes us. Um, uh, I have washed my feet. He is the one who washed our feet, right? As, as we'll see on Holy Thursday, right? How, how can I defile them? You, you're saying going to Christ is going to defile you? Absolutely not, right? Um, and even the Lord said, uh, remember when St. Peter said, no, 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 you can't wash my feet. It's like, if I don't wash, you have no part with like. This, this is the process. You just have to accept it. Um, and so um, she presented many inappropriate excuses. Oftentimes we present many excuses, but God is able to overcome each and every one of them as long as we allow him. Right? <clears throat> it's, it's easy to put on your robe and your shoes and open the door. It's not a hard thing to do. Right? Compared to him coming all the way from heaven, taking our form, dying on the cross, rising from the dead, sending his Holy Spirit. And I, I can't wake up to pray for five minutes a day. No, it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't balance. Right? So, uh, of course, I say this to myself first. But 
um, this is just the, the recognition of what God has done for me and, and what I'm doing. Um, not necessarily for, for him, but for myself, right? Um, and so uh, uh, what happens after this? She realizes her mistake, like the, like the, um, uh, the prodigal son of last Sunday. So she goes to open the door. What happens? He's not there. <laughs> After all that, he's not there. Um, why? Well, um, that, that's a long answer. Maybe we can answer another time. But it, he says, my beloved put his hand by the latch of the door and my heart yearned for So finally her heart begins to um, be alive again. Um, so the process of transformation has started. She rose to open for her beloved and her hands, her hands dripped with myrrh. This is the myrrh of the cross, as we said before. My fingers with liquid myrrh on the handles of the lock. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had turned away and was gone. So sometimes after we start our, our return to God, we don't feel the spirit anymore. We don't feel close to him as we did before. It's okay. That's part of the process. That's intentional. Um, um, and it says, my heart leapt up when I, he spoke. So I remember how I felt when he was speaking to me, and then it was gone. After, because I made the wrong decision, now I don't feel it anymore. Okay. But then what does she do? She goes throughout the whole city looking for him um, and talking to people. Have you seen him? And then they say, well, who is he? What is, and she begins to describe him very beautifully. Um, he is my everything. Right, um, <clears throat> And so this is kind of like what happened with the Samaritan woman. After God transformed her, she began to speak to the people, go, go, go see someone who told me everything that I have done. Right? <clears throat> um, and so there's oftentimes when we have a deep interaction with God, God we, we, for one reason or another, have the opportunity to share with others. Um, this is... Uh, and we call it missionary work, but oftentimes it doesn't have to be with words. Um, there, there doesn't have to be like a testimony where we say, I did this and this and this, look at me. You know, no, that's, that's not the, the, the proper Christian um, ad mindset. The, the mindset is for the salvation of each and every person, not to praise the person who did this and this and God. Uh, sometimes we do that because we, we need some worldly recognition of the spiritual um, step that we climbed. Um, the recognition comes from God. Um, so that's why we don't have this type of thing in, in the Orthodox Church. <clears throat> um, but when even when the Samaritan woman began to tell her, her colleagues or the people of the city, she was rejected most of, for the most part. And that was okay. But at the end, they ended up going to, to the Christ and seeing and tasting and loving him um, for, for their personal relationship with him. Um, and that's, that's what happens in the church. Um, and that's what each and one of us, that, that's why God sends us out throughout the different places of, of the world after, after being here. And um, the, the nets are thrown and more people and more people come to, to taste and see that the Lord is sweet. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, this is kind of like the process. And to conclude, it's, it's a cyclical uh, um, nature of it that happens to us, hopefully on a daily basis, not on a lifetime, right? So first, I have it in wrong order. So first we, we repent, right? We felt bad for what we have done. We felt bad for not waking up and, and, and getting dressed to open the door, right? <clears throat> and then what happens? Um... Um, we start looking for him everywhere, right? And we start recognizing how beautiful he is, how loving he is, how powerful he is, how amazing my life was when I was with him, right? And recognize that I'm lost without him, even though it's a city I'm very familiar with, right? <clears throat> and that's how the transformation happens inside, right? And then as I go through my daily life, I run into others and, and some type of experience is shared with words and most of the time without words. Um, and um, again, this is not our testimonial that, that happens, but it's, it's God-centered, not me-centered. It doesn't need words. It just needs love and humility and a holy life. And that's what transforms. 
That's what encourages others to repent. Um, uh, and so she served in her own way, just like the Holy Virgin Mary served in her own way. She doesn't have an official servant except for maybe the, the couple of verses um, in, in the Gospel of John and the first miracle where, when she, she tells them, you know, whatever he says to you, do it. That's pretty much one of the only verses in Scripture um, from the Holy Virgin Saint Mary, the greatest of all saints, <clears throat> right? So, but she shared her personal experience in one way, and probably just looking at her um, would would encourage a person to emulate a lifestyle like she did. Um, and again, it was all to, to glorify God, not not to to elevate her. So may the Lord give us this cycle of of, of transformation of life, of repentance, of service, um, just like He did with the. The Samaritan woman, just like he, he did with the Shunammite woman, just like he does with each and every one of us, God willing, and glory be to him now and forever into the age of all ages. Gabriel.